Today we are going to talk about how to set up your Photoshop for better image quality, most especially if you are a photographer like me that does frequency separation most of the times. My name is Abuze. Welcome to a new video. Alright, before we start today's video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the support and if you are not subscribed, be sure to do so and if you are subscribed, make sure to turn on post notifications so that you can be the first to view my latest content and also remember to comment and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Without any further ado, let's get right into the video. To get better image quality, you need to start making it right from your camera by, by making proper adjustments such as shooting a row and your color space at Adobe RBG. I have made a video on how I set up my Canon 5D Mark III ready for portrait and wedding photography. Check the link in the description to watch the video. Now let's see the adjustment we can make in Photoshop settings. So let's open up Photoshop and see what settings we can make to optimize our image quality. So usually when you open up Photoshop, this is how it usually pops up. And uh, if it is not on grid format like this, you may find it on list format like this. So for the sake of this tutorial, let's open up this very image. So the very first thing that I always try to fix is the color setting. I do that by going to edit and then color setting. Under color setting there is workspace and then other workspace there is RBG. I usually make sure it is on Adobe RBG 1998 and then I click OK. The second thing that I always like to fix is the camera roll. I do that by going to edit and then come down to preferences and then camera roll at the button. So under the camera roll, at the button of it option there is workflow. I click it and then I make sure under the color space it is still on Adobe RBG 1998. And then the other thing that I always like to fix is the depth. I always make sure I am on 16 bit, not 8 bit. I am on 16 bit. This is because 16 bit image quality is quite better than 8 bit because it contains more color that enhance the output result of an image. So that why that is why I always stick to 16 bit rather than the 8 bit. Then I click OK. Another thing that I should add here is I selected the 16 bit depth because I'm using 16 bit frequency separation action to edit or retouch my pictures because I'm using um, Beauty Retouch Academy. Let me uh, let's bring it up and see. It's on Windows and then extension and then Beauty Retouch. So I usually use the 16 bit action that's why i prefer to go with the 16 bit depth so that it will tally with each other i can't select 8 bit depth image and come here and be using 16 bit frequency separation action no if i'm using 8 bit then i have to use 8 bit frequency separation to do my free my uh, skin work and if i'm to use the 16 bit for better result then i have to select the 16 bit depth from the camera raw setting which is here as i have shown you 16 bit so if i'm using 16 bit excuse if i'm using 16 bit here then i have to use 16 bit for my frequency separation and if i'm using 8 bit then i have to use 8 bit for my frequency separation action but 16 bit is quite better than the 8 bit that's what i'm that is why i'm using 16 bit frequency separation action to get better result the next thing that i usually like to fix is the workspace by default the workspace is on essential let's check it let's go to windows workspace 
essential so i prefer using the photography and then i also like to do one or two adjustment to the photography itself the first thing that i do is drag my action button to the tab where the navigator and histogram are and then the tab where libraries and libraries and adjustments are i don't need it entirely so i drag it out and cancel it and then the next thing is i usually use mixer brush for my frequency separation so i prefer to always find it among the brush tool and pencil tool so to bring it up here is by going to this three dot i double click and hold and then slide to edit toolbar by the left hand side i will scroll down until i find my brush and pencil tool here they are and then by the right hand side i will check where my mixer brush is this is it then i will drag it and place it in between pencil tool and brush tool then i click done and then another thing i usually like to change about the interface is the color i usually prefer the darker color of it because it makes my picture stand out so that i will have more concentrating more concentration on what i'm editing so i do that by going to edit preferences and then interface i usually prefer to use the darker color this like kind of make my image to stand out from the interface entirely and then i click ok so the very last thing that i usually like to uh, fix is the uh, performance of the photoshop itself so how, how i do that is by going to settings preferences and then performance so what happens here is i will increase the level of ram photoshop is using from the computer right now my computer says it's 16 gig so photoshop is currently using 52 percent out of the 16 gig of my ram so to increase the uh, speed of the photoshop i will just increase the percentage to like 80 percent i think by taking it to 80 percent even if there are other softwares that are running aside photoshop 80 percent would won't make other applications to be crashing but if you go above 80 percent if you are someone that multitask that run two softwares at a time probably there is high tendency other softwares over uh, other programs will be crashing so you can work on uh, work on two softwares at a time but at 80 percent i think it's fairly enough that other softwares can run if the software does not require as much ram as photoshop so i usually leave it at 80 percent to optimize the performance of the photoshop entirely and then i click ok that is it for today i hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button let's meet in another video